Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. Again. Okay. Finally. Um, <laughs> I'm, I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. Yeah, we, we took a bit of a hiatus, didn't we? Yeah, um, it was mostly my fault, because I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to meet up with you for a couple of weeks, and I like I had plans, and I've got some notes, and I've got some clips, and I had like a pretty good podcast in my head, and and there were just like, I've got perfectly good excuses for not For not recording. doing anything, um, yeah. <laughs> Some of them actually are perfectly good excuses, and some of them less so. Um, there was some laziness on my part, I'll admit. It happens, man. We all have those moments. Yeah. And then there was like the possibility of meeting up with you to do the podcast. And then yeah. that didn't happen a couple of times, too. So. That did happen. So, um, I mean, that's, that's, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around. Yeah. But. <laughs> I should have thrown up the old uh, wage um, oh, podcast yeah. from back in the day that's not like out there again on the website. And all we that. still need to one day just like take a day, like like a day day and like just record a couple of podcasts to yeah. have in the bank. Ones that are kind of evergreen type that'll always be relevant. Yeah. And just have those kind of sitting there. Yeah. So that when we have these moments, I don't have to do anything. I can just, yeah, you can just throw up an old pocket, throw up one of these we've got kind of, you know, mm-hmm. laying around. Yeah. Um, I do wish I'd caught your, uh, your NPR, um, <laughs> your NPR voice before we got started here. Yeah. Like you guys really missed it. It was, a, it was a good one. <laughs> I try to recreate it, but it was a thing in the moment, man. It's yeah. The... I just didn't hit record quick enough. Yeah. You just, just missed out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Um, so originally I planned to just talk about rights again to some degree and democracy again to some degree. And like, I, and I still want to do that. Um, yeah, I've but got not a, today. I've got a lot to say about democracy. By yeah, the way, yeah. like I, I'm glad I'm glad we're having. The, or I'm just glad we're doing the podcast. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you said, you we were going to change things up when I got here. I'm like, oh, that's fine with me. Yeah, as long as we, we're recording, we you're, you're pressing record, right? Yeah, right. not quickly we, enough. But. <laughs> apparently not. Yeah. But yeah, we need to need to do this. But yeah, I do want to have that conversation though about um, democracy in general and some because mm-hmm. I've got a lot of and st- not stuff. Just I got a lot of thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. So. Um, and and my positions kind of changed over the over time on that because mm-hmm. I'm I am more of an ANCAP now. So. Yeah. You know that's that's new territory for me. Yeah. So. Well, I can help. <laughs> but but like I say, all for another podcast. So what do we want to talk about tonight? <clears throat> well, um, so I had uh, like a, a long exchange with somebody, um, about about a bunch of things about government in general and like a lot of it um focused around partisanship so is this a fan of the show sometimes sometimes <laughs> okay <laughs> hey i'll take it yeah he's a listener then yes okay sometimes sometimes fair <laughs> enough <laughs> apparently we've pissed him off a couple of times and he's gone little stretches of not yeah, listening taking a break yeah um which is fine you know as long as he comes back yeah at least from time to time, check in so we can piss them off again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, which isn't my goal, of course, but uh, I don't know. It, it just uh, So I had a conversation with this guy many years ago, and I think I brought it up on the podcast. And so like, I'm going to start with that and then go to this more recent um, exchange. Um, and so a couple of years ago, uh, we were talking about uh, discrimination in the workplace. Yeah. And I was saying that I thought that that private business should be able to discriminate on any, any basis they please, you know, freedom of association here. And I said, it's only bad for them in the long term in the market. Yeah. Like if you turn somebody down, who's a good, like a good prospect because yeah. of some kind of superficial stupidity. Um, well that guy goes and works for your competitor. You're, you might yeah. have some problems. Like yeah. this might be the reason that your business fails yeah. or you refuse a certain kind of customer because of some superficial thing. Yeah. Um, First off, especially in this day and age, that doesn't just upset that group that that customer is a part of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. And especially, you make a good point, mm-hmm. especially nowadays, because like that, that's going to upset everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's just kind of the way of the world, you know? Yeah. And I think that the, uh, you know, green trumps it all, right? Yeah. Like people want to make money. Yeah. Um, and uh, you'll have to remember that in, you know, Jim Crow era, and so forth. Like a lot of discrimination was government enforced. Yeah. 
Well, exactly. Right. Um, and before that too, uh, the, there are plenty of people that it would have been more than happy to accept money from anybody that wanted to give it to them. Yeah. Um, and the reason that there were laws about this stuff is to prevent people from doing just that because yeah. they would have on their own. Yeah. Um, you know, and actually one of my favorite examples is, uh, is the one that Dave Smith brings up all the time, uh, about, you know, he's a New York Jew that can step out on his sidewalk, raise his hand, get picked up by a Muslim taken anywhere in the city and wished well when he gets out, yeah. you know, like, well, exactly. Like the the market will tends to root out these kind of of issues mm-hmm. of you know um, just disagreements over religion and stuff like that. Yeah. Like I mean those those things just when when you're dealing in the marketplace just aren't as big of a factor as they are when you're dealing with government <laughs> mandates and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when businesses are competing. Yeah. Those little bits can make a difference in whether a business succeeds or fails. Oh, absolutely. And most people would rather their business succeed than successfully not serve a certain kind of customer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, so, and we generally agreed on this point. But what he kept pressing me on is, well, what about government employees? You yeah. can't allow government to discriminate um, yeah. against people. Like, that. that's just not fair. Like, you can't let the government do that. And like I had a hard time answering this because, like, we weren't working in the same circle at that point. Yeah, yeah. All right, and I came to realize this later, and this kind of came up now. But my answer to him was, "Well, I don't think the government should have employees, really, anyway. Like, right? I, I'm I'm not on board with government jobs, so I'm yes, I'm opposed to discrimination in government work if government work exists, but I'm opposed to government work. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah. you know, like the, this other thing is kind of, kind of irrelevant, like not totally, but, yeah. but yeah. kind of irrelevant. That's not, that's not my focus here. It's not my point. Yeah. Um, and so we had this, this same kind of thing recently where, um, he was talking about how, how terrible the two party system was and what a disaster it was and that we needed to get away from that and that we didn't spend enough time talking about that, like you know, criticizing that system here on this podcast. Now, first off, I will point out that I have said many times on this podcast that I always vote for third parties and I never vote for an incumbent. Yeah. Like I was going to say, we <laughs> talk about this pretty regularly. Well, it I comes feel up. like, <laughs> um, it, it definitely comes up, but the, <laughs> and I was, I was stuck again. I was like, well, what, I mean, okay. So we're not, explicitly criticizing the two party system a lot saying, Oh, well we've got to tear down this two party system. We're saying we've got to tear down this system. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that doesn't matter how many parties are in it. Yeah. The, the system is the problem, not the number of parties involved. Absolutely. Um, and I'd much prefer for there to be a strong third party and that to be the libertarian party. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I'm all for that. I'm all in, like I'm a member, I'm, I do all the stuff and mm-hmm. I do work for the party, but like the end goal is still to kind of like tear the stuff down. <laughs> yeah, to to disseminate power, to yeah. like decentralize, to you know, um, and exactly the the number of parties involved doesn't matter. Now, given the system as it is, I would rather have you know six active parties than two. Yeah, um, that's absolutely true. Yeah, um, but uh, given my druthers, I'd rather decentralize the whole system yeah and there'd be hundreds of little local parties instead of you know several big national parties or Absolutely. even if there's just several big national parties that the national government didn't actually have that much influence on our day-to-day lives yeah like and, they certainly do now and that would solve a lot of the the just the anger that there is in politics in general mm-hmm. um by doing that if you if the federal government didn't have the power it has now politics wouldn't be as divisive as it is yeah. because as it stands one half of the country every four years gets to vote and rule over the other half of the yeah. country impose its views on the other on exactly. the rest exactly yeah so i mean you you start tearing some of this down you start whittling away at some of that mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah if you just start like taking the power back yeah taking the power back to the local level you have far less of a problem with this um, seeing your phone light up made me remember to turn my <laughs> volume off. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, but again, this was one of those situations where he, 
and he kept uh, he he was giving me a hard time about being more right um, yeah. and the you know supporting the Republicans and criticizing the Democrats. Now again, I would push back a little bit on that. I think just the last been, episode alone. I mean. I know we made multiple positive references to stuff Biden had done. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't, I don't like Biden. <laughs> like yeah, I don't, okay. I don't want to do that, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody's right, I'm going to give them credit. Yeah. Like whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I do think that a big part of this, and this is where he turns off this episode, um, is that he has such a hatred for Donald Trump yeah. that if you're not criticizing Donald Trump, constantly then you're you're not doing it right yeah. like he's such a terrible person that you can't defend him well yeah. I, can, I i i well we did defend him sometimes when i thought he was being treated unfairly yeah um when you were only getting half the story when they were pulling quotes out of context and things like that yeah. um and i you know i i do um uh, seek what at least i can put together as being that the actual truth yeah who really knows in the end, but, yeah. um, but there was a strong bias against the guy and there were plenty of things. I mean, he was like, you know, listen, what you can hear with your own ears and see with your own eyes. You see how terrible this guy. Yeah. I said how despicable he was all the time. Yeah. Um, I and think he's, a, he's saying he's a saint. <laughs> yeah. I think he's a terrible person, but, um, and but in the situations where his, what he's trying to do, like, I don't care about the personality. I care about the policy. Yeah. Um, where his policies coincide with mine, I'm going to support him. And where they don't, I'll criticize him. Yeah. And I, I said, look, you know, the conservatives that listen to our podcast <laughs> probably feel the same way that you do about this when I start talking about how great the JCPOA was. Yeah. Um, or start uh, criticizing the Israeli state. Um, and how they're treating the Palestinians. Yeah. In fact, I know that they do because my mom <laughs> hates that. Yeah. Um, and so, like, this is what I thought it came down to. And I said to him, I was like, it seems to me that, that you're the one that's trapped in this partisan paradigm. Yeah. And so what you're, the way you're approaching this is, and there are some, you know, intervening factors as well. Like, I, I do think, I, I said, look, we, we oppose the power. Yeah. And right now the left is winning. So it probably comes off that we're criticizing the left more than the right. And yeah. the truth is that I do lean more right in a lot of areas than I do left. Yeah. Um, but it's not because I'm secretly a Republican. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, that's not the thing. And well, and by the way, just to, to, to kind of just mention off of that, like the left was winning even when Trump was in office. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not like, well, the, the left came back after Trump. Mm-hmm. The left was winning the whole time Trump was in office. Yeah. Like, in fact, making leaps and bounds, I would say, in a lot of areas. Yeah. Um, and I do see a pushback the other way um, yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably going to be within the next couple of years that we spend more time criticizing the right than the left, because yeah. I do see the pendulum swinging back. Well, and if you just think back to when the last time the right was truly in power, which mm-hmm. was under George W. Bush, yeah. what did we get then? Because I know, I mean, I was a harsh critic of the Iraq war. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and, and like the Patriot and all this stuff. This is all yeah, stuff that I, we're very hard against. Like yeah. this is not stuff that we support. I was certainly a, a harsh critic of um, the the surveillance state Yeah. Uh, generally. Um, and in fact, like the Patriot Act is one of the f- things that first really inspired me to start doing this podcast. Yeah. A is lot how of that. terrible yeah. that exactly. That is. <laughs> um But uh, anyway, yeah, it was like, it seems to me that you're the one that's trapped in this partisan paradigm. And I think that a lot of people are. And I think a lot of people have this position. This is where we lose the rest of our audience. um, (laughs) Where, like, have this very binary view of the thing. So if you don't agree with me, you must be in the other party. You must be on the other side. You're playing for the other team. Yeah. Um, all the things that we agree on, that's because everybody agrees on that. Right. Yeah. And all these things that we disagree on, it's because you're on the other side. Yeah. And I think that both sides kind of look at it that way. They do. They absolutely do. And he blames Trump for partisan politics or it, it becoming so partisan. I think that it was moving that way in the Obama years, but actually I think it's been moving that way 
for, for a long a as long as I can remember. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's, um, been, it's become more and more well, partisan. Well, the, the the reason that things intensified so much with Trump is because Trump is such a polarizing figure, mm -hmm. and he's not afraid to to say what he means. Yeah, where all of these other politicians kind of like take the take the line, whatever the the tested words are, you mm -hmm. know, and use that. And Trump's never done that. Like from the yeah. first speech when he came out, he was throwing bombs and and a lot of and it pushed people into their corners pretty quick mm -hmm. um and that and that hasn't like that's kind of a genie you can't put back in the bottle now <laughs> like yeah. you know like that anger is still all out there even though nobody's heard anything really from mm -hmm. trump since he left office even though by the way i will remind people he is out doing rallies yeah but he's he is. not he's fundraising like oh mad he's right bringing now, money but, in like crazy but yeah. he ain't on twitter and he ain't on the news every day mm -hmm. but he is still out there yeah um and I, I think I, I actually I didn't say this at the beginning. I think he's going to run. I yeah. think, and I, I'll tell you this: I, not only do I think he's going to run, um, I think he's going to walk away with the Republican nomination because nobody that can beat him will get in. Because there mm -hmm. are some people I think DeSantis could beat him, and I think there are a few people that could take him. I don't know. I, it's, you want some uh, some criticism of the right? Um, yeah. So I supported DeSantis in being opposed to. Um, the uh, passports, vaccine passports, and so forth. He's been good on that, yeah. But now he's also he's also uh, um, attacking businesses that require vaccines to get in, and so forth. Yeah, that's their business. I mean, I'm, like I don't agree with it either. Yeah. Um, but it is not government's position to tell a business how to run its business, whether it's on the left or the right. I agree, but to me, this is such a this is such a dangerous issue I, I that I can it, but allow I, it. Like I started this episode saying that I was okay with private businesses discriminating on whatever basis they please. Yeah. That includes vaccine status. Yeah. I don't, and I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, I really don't, but principally I don't disagree with you at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's one of them deals like, I'll be honest, if I was in his position, I'm not saying I wouldn't do the same thing right. just because somebody's got to fight this fight. Like this is, this is, this is one for the, he, he already fought the fight. His, his fight is to fight against the level above him. Yeah. Right. His fight is to fight against the federal government to prevent the federal government from coming in and mandating things of his citizens. Yeah. His fight is not the people below him. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I don't, I, you're not wrong about that, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying like this, this is a serious enough thing that mm -hmm. I, I agree that it's, it's really serious. I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to get bogged down into COVID no. some more right now. I just, I just don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the, one of the issues here is that like the paradox of power is that anybody who seeks is, is not the person that you want to have it. Yeah. Oh, and Trump is absolutely <laughs> right. falls into that category 200%. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And by the way, like... Just and every other politician out every there, Every other frankly. politician. And I'll tell you, when I'm hiring management, like mm -hmm. our hiring management or considering people to promote into management, mm -hmm. that's something I look at very hard. Like if this is a person that really gets a kick out of telling people what to do, mm -hmm. that's not the person I want. Yeah. Like I want the person that's reluctant, that, that will do it, but isn't can tell isn't getting a thrill out of it yeah. because that's the person that's going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. um, the one that's like, that's getting his rocks off telling people what to do. I'm, that's a bad manager. Yeah. And it, it, it like 20 years of experience tells me that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I mean, I do think that the partisanship is a problem. So, but you want to know the libertarian position. The libertarian position is do as you please, as long as you don't impose it on me. Yeah. And that's the, you know, right now that ends up being more of a problem with the left than the right. Yeah. Oh, that has not always been true. No, absolutely. Um, and in fact, we talk about cancel culture and how terrible the left is about the cancel culture. The cancel culture started with the right. The yeah. cancel culture started with the religious right trying to push TV shows off because they were not godly enough or whatever. I mean, you know, yeah. um, and uh, and now it's it turns out that the left is just better at it. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> well, the, and there's a reason the left is better at it because at the end of the day, the left has 
the the um, teaching institutions mm-hmm. and the media. Yeah, like they're naturally going to be better at it. And like, the arts. And the arts. I mean, they've got all mm-hmm. of those in their corner. So yeah, I mean, they would be better at this game. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know the the essential problem is that, and he, I think. I think it's very clear that we're kind of joking about having the right position on the time. I mean, I don't actually feel like I do feel like we have the right position all the time. Yeah. Of course, I think most people do. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, and I've said before, the difference between our position being right and others is that if we get to impose quote unquote, yeah. our position, yeah. you can still do your thing. Exactly. Most of the other ways, yeah. If they get to impose their position, I don't get to do my thing anymore. Exactly. And that's the reason, that's a large part of the mm-hmm. reason that we're right about so much of this stuff. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, freedom is the answer. Yeah. And freedom's the most important thing mm-hmm. um, above all else. Yeah. Um, it, it's the moral position. I, I do think that I could make better decisions in people's lives than they can. Yeah. Um, sometimes, I mean, not yeah. everybody, obviously, but, uh, and, and I think that I can make better decisions in my own life, <laughs> yeah. uh, honestly. But, um, there are some people who I look at and I'm like, you know, they're just doing this all wrong and I could live their life. I could run their life better than they're running their life, Yeah, but it's not my place to do so. Exactly. They have to figure it out. Yep. Yep. They have to figure it out and I can help and I can offer help. But yeah. I can't impose my help. Well, and that's really where the trick's at. Because there's actually people who are who have. There's a profession I can't out there. Force them to do it my way. Well, there's a life coach profession out yeah, there. Yeah, I had a like, friend that used to do that. I was gonna say I've known a couple of people that's done it throughout just throughout my life. Like mm-hmm. I've met, you know. And I mean, it's it's a neat deal. But it it goes back to the person receiving that information has to voluntarily come to them and be like, right. I, I need help managing my life. And yeah, I realize I'm, I'm that. doing something wrong. I, and I need clearly I'm to, not getting yeah. it right. Like yeah. some, some guidance may help me. Mm-hmm. And so then you have a voluntary exchange there. Yeah. And then they have to take that advice. Yeah. And then like they you still can't make them do it yeah. the way you're telling them anyway. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it, the, even then it's the, just guidance. It's yeah. not like a rigid thing. Yeah. You know, I, you know, like, like I said before, it's the volunteerism is the difference between leading and ruling. Yeah. Um, and there is a big difference between a leader and a ruler. Yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. Uh, leaders are selected. Leaders are followed by choice. Yeah. Rulers are not. Exactly. Um, and I guess I, I think that 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 is the problem. I do agree that the two party system is the problem. But the two-party system is the problem because of exactly that kind of thing. Yeah. There are more than two opinions. And if I don't agree with you, it's not because I'm of the other opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a <laughs> lot There's a lot of nuance. There's yeah. a lot of gray area in between. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure what we do about that. I think that, that people have for the most part, kind of chosen their teams and they're running with it. But yeah, it's, it's a really crazy thing. And, and just for the record, going back to just Trump in general, mm-hmm. like Trump was not part of the two party system. Yeah. That was the other thing. I don't want to press that about he ran as a Republican, but he was not a, he's a, he's a, tr- now you have, because now that's where the Republican mm-hmm. party is split mm-hmm. between Trump Republicans and traditional Republicans. Yeah. And the Trump Republicans pretty well own the party, mm-hmm. but like they, that's only because he came in and changed it. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I find really interesting about his whole argument about how all, you know, everybody in the system is terrible, um, yeah. is that like, actually Trump was the best thing you could have asked for because <laughs> he wasn't inside the system until he was inside the system. Now he, yeah. I, he became a part of that system. Oh, well, yeah, um, I'd agree with that. But at least initially when he was a candidate, he was, he was representing the dissident voice. Yeah. Without question. Like, if you're not happy with government, with politics as usual, Trump should have been your guy. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's plenty of other people that's that's held that position. Um, and, and I was actually thinking about this last night. Like, Ron Paul. Like, when Ron He's Paul, more outside the system than Rand Paul, by the way. Oh, I, without question. Yeah. And, and he got, particularly in 2012, like, he was winning polls. He was, he was surging. Mm-hmm. And the media absolutely ignored him. Did yeah. everything they could to not 
Just, just not even mention his name. Yeah. And, Do you remember the John Stewart yes, thing? <laughs> yes. I loved that. That was so funny. It, you uh, know, when they listed one, two, and four. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> what just, about number three? Where was number three <laughs> at in here? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but what really got me thinking was like, and that's the reason, a big reason that Ron Paul wasn't able to make a, a huge run in 2012 was mm-hmm. because the media, full court press, shut him down. Yeah. Um, and what's so crazy to me and just kind of makes my conspiracy mind wonder is they did the opposite with Trump. Yeah. And well, they, they thought it was so absurd that it would actually be a benefit to have him as the opponent. Did they, though? Or I, was, I think so. I mean, that's certainly I mean, that's, the, that's the what, message that has come out since. Yeah, and that um, definitely seems to be the case. But at the same time— They were actively promoting Trump because they didn't think Trump could possibly stand up to Hillary. Yeah, which was just— not even they tell you to the extreme because yeah. anybody that takes five minutes looking at Hillary is like, yeah, this ain't this ain't the person. Yeah, she's <laughs> terrible too. Yeah. Um. Right. I and but <laughs> that's the thing is that like regardless of what you think of him as a person, person Trump has a charisma no. uh, about him. Yeah. Um. That Hillary just doesn't. Oh, absolutely. I and I mean, I like, like I say, I I take a lot of flack for this all the time, but I mean, Trump's entertaining, and I yeah, I, I agree. Like I mean, I just like <laughs> it what was, a wonderful time to be alive. Yeah, like I mean, I just like, but <laughs> it it does go back to just respect for the system because mm-hmm. I have none. Yeah. Like so, it doesn't matter to me that this clown is in office. Mm-hmm. Like it it's that was a big thing between me and my brother. Yeah, um, is the uh, that he, you know like he was so upset about Trump because Trump was so non presidential. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't care about that at all. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> that just doesn't. What do you mean, non presidential? Like, yeah. I, I'm actually far more entertained. Like, if you watch uh, Parliament in the UK, those people are mean to each other. Oh, yeah. And then look at the early days of uh, Congress here, too. Yeah. I mean, the, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Hamilton Brawls. and Burr. Yeah, uh, like the, one of them killed the other one in a yeah. duel. I mean, <laughs> you know, this was. Yeah. I, I think that that's more. Inter- I, I don't. You know, putting this veneer of some kind of sophistication and, you know, properness about it doesn't doesn't change anything. And it doesn't because, make it any better. To because me. it's not a because it's not as sophisticated and proper as they would have you believe. Yeah. Like, I mean, these are all criminals. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like they are like yeah. this. That's just they didn't get to where they're at because they were good people. Yeah. So this is some of those moments where I wish we'd talked about democracy in the episode before, yeah. um, you know, because this is one of those things about democracy is that it it incentivizes the worst kind of people to seek power. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, and like we've already established that anybody that's seeking power is not the person that you want to have it. Yeah. And then the worst kind of people as the kind of people that end up seeking power in a democracy. Yeah. So there you go. Like the, there's, there's a huge flaw in the system. Yeah. Which a big part of it to me is that it is just on such a large scale. Cause mm-hmm. me and you were talking earlier. I mean, this country is massive. Yeah. It's a huge country. Mm-hmm. Um, and to have one side of it get to roll over the other side. Well, the, the just, issue is back to that two party thing. Like, 330 million people cannot be represented by two points of view. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And if you, if this is where, where my big thing when Adam Kokesh was running for the Mm -hmm. LP position um, or for the candidate, my thing, I really liked him because the idea of just dissolve the federal government, turn it all back over to the States, Mm -hmm. let the States decide the States can be the power that be. And then, and then we can, you know, each state can do their own thing, yeah. you know, and each, and, and that, that kind of falls into one of our principles of governing at home, mm-hmm. you know? Well, in the, the military and economic alliance that was really the purpose of the United States to, to begin with, I think would still exist. Yeah. I mean, if California were attacked, Alabamians would go defend well, California. Now I'm, I'm not sure that it would work the other way, <laughs> Well, the, <laughs> but I think it would. Here, well, and here's the other, the flip side to that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just the reality. Mm-hmm. Nobody's coming over here to take us over, mm-hmm. man. Well, like, they might, if they were 50 independent States, they might try, of, but I think that the first go at it, when we all band to, cause we would all mm-hmm. band together. Yeah. There's no way, particularly the California example, there's mm-hmm. no way Alabama would let California, like as much as we hate California, yeah. like, we, <laughs> like we would be happy for them to go be their own country, but not under Japan. Exactly. Or China. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We would, we would rally <laughs> behind California in a heartbeat or enough of us would yeah. that it would be, 
that it would be fine. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you may would have one or two instances like that early on where something mm-hmm. like that happened, where mm-hmm. another power just like decide they were going to try to come in, mm-hmm. and we would squash it quick, and that would be that. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this country's too well armed and too many patriot loving people in this yeah. country to I mean, let something like that happen. Yeah. There there is more identity with each other as states even as independent states than there are with any other country in the world. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and, and I, I just think that that's the answer is to mm-hmm. just turn all of this power over to the individual states. I'd be more worried about states going and and having Wars between each other, between yeah. each other, than I would be. I mean, a that was the power. other purpose of the the federal government at the time was to try and settle disputes between states, is to yeah. set up a legal That's, system to settle disputes between states. That was really the purpose of the Supreme Court. Yeah, um, it's not really what it does anymore. Not anymore. But, yeah. Um, you know, but that that was you know part of the purpose of the Supreme Court, yeah. and but I I think the real answer is for people to just recognize that that your ideas aren't anything worth fighting over. Yeah. I mean, they're worth defending. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're not worth fighting over. And they're certainly not worth cutting people out of your lives and so forth. Like, no. um, he, he was surprised. You and I have a friend that is a hardcore socialist. Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right. And he is a friend who's yeah. a hardcore socialist. Yeah. I like talking to him about these things. Oh, I love talking to him about um, this stuff. And it's... You know, we don't get mad. We don't get upset about it. It's just something Honestly, to discuss. Honestly, I learn a lot talking to him yeah. because it's a different perspective that, that mm. I haven't always understood. I actually mm. have a, from talking to him, have a mm. way better understanding of at least where he's coming from. Yeah. And the amazing thing is, and he's actually not the only hardcore socialist friend I have. I've got well, a few. Me either. But right. um, the mutual one that we mm. have, um, like... We agree on more than we disagree with. Yeah. The, the disagreement comes... There's still the Western culture underpinnings of all yeah. this anyway. And, so. and really... And the goals are generally the same. That's what I was fixing to say, is the goals are the same. We just have different routes to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think my route's better. But, yeah. you know, I mean, and if you draw drew it back down to 50 independent states... Like California could go be socialist all at once, mm-hmm. you know, and New York can have their vaccine pa- passport all they want. Yeah. You know, and as long as they let people leave. Exactly. Well, that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, at some point that could actually be a problem because people yeah. are fleeing New York right now. Well, I mean, that's the real problem with the history of socialism. Right? Well, yeah, Is because the, they have that, to build the wall to keep them in. Yeah, exactly. Like they can't, <laughs> they can't <laughs> let people leave. Yeah. Um, or the system, you know, the system falls apart without the people and the, you yeah. know, they're destroying the people. It's, exactly. And so everybody wants to go. Um, yeah. to, where, yeah. to, to where there's capitalism. <laughs> yeah. And, until, you know, the whole starvation and genocide part of socialism that comes eventually. Yeah. Or has every time so far. So far. And maybe mm-hmm. they'll figure it out one day. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, you know, I doubt it. Yeah. Um, I, I think, that, though, that that's the key is to just keep talking to each other. He's... You know, he was saying, well, you should probably get out and travel more and like talk to some liberals. I talk to liberals all the time. Yeah. I read liberals. I listen to interviews with liberals. I, I, I have plenty of exposure to liberal ideas. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've said before, I started off my political interests as a Marxist. Yeah. Yeah. You did. (laughs) Marxist Mike. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago now. I outgrew that. Yeah. But uh, like, even then, I mean, I recognized some problems. I mean, I remember, I remember discussing it with somebody and saying that, well, I mean, there was nothing wrong with socialism. You just need a real idealistic shift in the population. Yeah. Okay. You just needed everybody to change their mind about (laughs) how (laughs) things should work. I mean, it's happened before. It's not like it's totally it's outside the realm of possibility. Yeah. But I, I recognize now that that's... Honestly, what we're advocating for, we need that in in our... Well, that's true. Because the truth is, because people may or may not know this as far as just with libertarians in general, but mm-hmm. there are the collapsitarians that, yeah. that push for the collapse of civilization so it can be put back together in a more libertarian yeah. way. The problem with <clears> that is, is if the collapse happened today... We wouldn't get the government we want out of it. Well, exactly. Um, so we need more time to to change minds and to to try to change the culture. And there's also the libertarians that want to use the force of government to to impose the the libertarian ideal. And yeah. the the one that sticks out to me every time is Milton Friedman. 
Yeah. Milton Friedman said all of the right things about economic freedom and so forth. Yeah. But when given the opportunity to use the force of government to impose a free market on a society, yeah. which if it's imposed, I don't think it's a free it's market. It's not a but, free market, yeah. But he did. Yeah. Like yeah. he absolutely took those opportunities to try and impose free market um, capitalism on yeah. on not just our country, but on others. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of criticism of him for that. Yeah. Well, rightly um, so. I, I mean, mean, I love listening to the guy talk. Yeah. The guy has a lot of the answers. I, I mean, I've I read a, I several of his books. Yeah. yeah I've read know. several of his books. He's, he's a brilliant, fascinating and mostly right person, but given the opportunity to use the power of the state yeah. to have his way, he did. Yeah. And that's, that's not, not, not what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, and unfortunately, I think that that's the way a lot of people think. Uh, you know, I, one of my favorite quotes is Heinlein, and I, I'm going to paraphrase here because I don't, I've yeah. never written it down. It's just one of those that kind of rattles around in my head. Yeah. Um, he said, it is a truism that any group, cult, or sect will uh, legislate its beliefs into law if given the political power to do so. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So. And that's the danger of, of a strong government. Absolutely, which is the reason that it has to be either sm- I, I think small and local. Like I'm an end cap mm-hmm. at the end, so I don't really want any government. Yeah. But I think when at the end of the day you'd end up with just small local governments. Yeah. You know? Well, you, you know, ideally you would end up with loose affiliations of neighbors and, and yeah. communities, like HOAs, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, looser than that, I would say. <laughs> um, well, you know. I mean, maybe in some areas and some areas not, mm-hmm. because I think that's what. But I think that's what you want, because mm-hmm. there's enough people out there that want a strong government that you'll have areas where you'll have that, yeah. but then you'll have other areas where you don't. And I think that the big cities would be the areas where you'd have like a, like you'd have like your city government probably set up a lot the way that's set up now, Yeah, you know? Um, but you wouldn't have the overhanging federal government jumping in and causing the problems. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's, uh, we got like 10 minutes. Um, unless you have more to say about this, no, uh, specifically, I was going to say, let's go ahead and talk about, um, some of this vaccine coercion. No, I, um, I was hoping we would have at least a little time to kind of, cause this, this is my, I, I said it last time this came up. This is my hill to die on, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is, this is the big one. Like mm-hmm. this is, well, there's a lot of people out there right now having to make decisions about whether to continue their careers. Yeah. Um, yeah. because of this stuff. We and, had the discussion in our house about it already because yeah. while it hasn't came to our doorstep yet, mm-hmm. um, I think we're not far from it. Yeah. Well, and I agree. And so here, this is another one of those weird libertarian things, right? Um, And I guess we've talked about it with Facebook and Twitter censorship and so forth too, is that there are businesses. And so I heard another story from a guy that was talking about how his wife um, worked at a grocery store, like a small, uh, small chain um, grocery store. And, and it's in like, I don't know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, something like that. I don't remember. Like definitely freer country, generally speaking. Um, And so, you know, people don't generally wear masks around and so forth. And so they were mandating uh, masks in the, for the employees in the store. Yeah. And um, the, you know, the girl who works there is pregnant. She's like seven months pregnant. And so they decided that there was no way that they were going to restrict the breathing of the pregnant wife, you know, (laughs) like they weren't going to go along with this and they argued it up the chain and, um, and they were given an unpaid leave of absence. That was the compromise. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, his thing is like, I don't even understand why they would do this. That it's not like their customers are demanding it and so forth. Yeah. And I have two answers. Um, and it could be either one or a combination thereof mm-hmm. of what what this is, what this is about. I don't think it's about virtue signaling. I don't think it, none of that stuff. Um, one, the corporate offices lawyers have made them so terrified of liability yeah. um, that they're doing this to try and uh, you know preempt any kind of legal action that would hold them to blame for somebody getting COVID and getting either really sick or dying. Yeah. Um, of course, the truth is that you could never trace that back to a specific interaction at a specific store. Yeah. Like 
uh, it seems you, to me in, that in any a court good, of law, you would have to prove that that person didn't interact with anybody else ever. <laughs> yeah, like over ten or fourteen days, something yeah. like that. Did you have any interactions with any other human beings during this period? <laughs> um, and actually, I guess it would be longer than that because it could be. Well, it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, um, but what matters though to that company is. Like they're still gonna have to pay a bunch of money to defend that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um. And it may be suggested to them that they just settle anyway. And that's usually what happens. These corporations yeah. settle this stuff out. So it could be very expensive. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the fear of God's been put into them by the attorneys that said, "Well, I would argue this case, and you would lose," you know. And so we need to go ahead and put these things in place to yeah. make it almost impossible that you to show that you did everything in your power to make sure that there was no transfer of this illness in your store. Yeah. Right. Um. The other thing is, um, and this is the part that comes up with the censorship things, is that governments everywhere are threatening business licenses, which is what I said would happen from the beginning, right? Yep. Um, are threatening business licenses, um, imposing closures. Uh, the the governments are 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 forcing the hands of businesses to to do these things. Even yeah. doing stuff like, well, you took these PPP loans, which of course had no strings attached at the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now, you know, in payment for taking this money from the federal government, you need to do this for the federal government, or yeah. we'll find some way of extracting that money back out of you. That's yeah. oh, more absolutely. or less what's happening. Um, so, uh, you know, the businesses are in a bad place Yeah. in this. Oh, yeah. Um, um, and to, to add to all of that, like, um, it, it, especially with the vaccine thing, the mask thing, not so mm -hmm. much, cause we've kind of been there and done this once with the mask. Yeah. Um, and I don't know from my personal experience, I don't think we lost a lot of them there. I don't think a lot of employees left their job over the mask thing. Like mm -hmm. the example you said, I think there was some, but I don't think it was as massive as it will be for the vaccine thing. Yeah. Um, because there's a group of people out there that will not take this vaccine no matter mm. what you do. Yeah. Um, and those people will leave their jobs. And some of those people are in the medical field. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, a lot of them are. Um, so, I mean, you're already talking about hospitals and, and, and just businesses in general. Everywhere you go are running at low capacity as far as employees go because they just don't have enough. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about maybe taking 5 10% more people away from the workforce <laughs> yeah. in these areas. Well, and that's, that could be the saving grace in all of this um, is just economic demands yeah. uh, because, you know, you have the demands on the one side that threaten your economics from, yeah. from government or attorneys or whatever. You have economic demands on the other side that threaten your, your business in that, well, it doesn't really matter if I get sued, if I can't staff my store to keep it open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it, I, I'm hoping that that pressure on that side um, will be enough to keep businesses from really imposing mandates and sticking to it. Yeah. Um, if they start looking at it and they're like, well, you know, we'd have to close our doors or we'd have to, yeah. you know, Woman. limit our business hours to such a degree that we can't profit anymore or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, I've been trying to go to my bank um, for like a, a week. Yeah. And the lobby's never open. They have like one person there in the drive through and that's it. And they're, you know. The bank we use for the company I work for has been at, ever since COVID started, has mm -hmm. been just massively understaffed. Like mm -hmm. they've got a handful of people that run the whole operation. Yeah. And it's, it is frustrating for me because like. And the, by the way, everybody, that's not because all of their staff died of COVID. No, no, it's absolutely not. And it's not because they're out sick with COVID. I mean, there's been waves come mm -hmm. through. Um, I know we've had some stores shut down because it came through a store, so we had yeah. to shut it down for a few days. And um, and that's happened with the bank I actually, the bank I'm referring to, that's happened mm -hmm. there too. But, um, but that's a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. Like once that happens, you're good after that. Yeah. Um, it's it the the real problem is you just can't find enough people to run the operation mm -hmm. um and it, it, i was what i was fixed to say is it's frustrating with me for the bank because like i, I don't have another option like yeah. i have to go to this bank yeah. like I, I, there's no i can't just go somewhere else you mm -hmm. know um but I, what i'm finding out just in general as far as restaurants and entertainment stuff 
like you find pretty quick that you don't have a whole lot of options there. Like mm -hmm. when, when a couple of them start shutting down, the other ones are so packed, you can't get into them. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a vicious cycle. And right they now. can't staff enough to keep, they can't staff the, enough to meet anyway. all the new demand. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, I, it, it's certainly a danger and I, I'm going to just add one more thing to this and then kind of transition a little bit to another one of the dangers of all this. Um, I was listening to a Dutch healthcare worker talking about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he was, um, he, he talked about, you know, why people, are and probably should be skeptical of these vaccines, yeah. um, among other things. But but his real focus in in his talk was about the demonizing of the unvaccinated. Yeah, he is like this is a this is a real dangerous. Well, the mistreating of trend. the unvaccinated community. Right, right. The the discrimination against the unvaccinated community. Yeah. and like I said. I, I oppose discrimination, but I think that you have the right to associate with whoever you want. I agree. Um, but it's the way uh, it's the way the unvaccinated are becoming a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. um, well, in the same way that the Muslims were a scapegoat after nine eleven and so forth. Yeah. Like it wasn't the Muslim community that took down the towers. No. Um, it was a bunch of uh, political dissidents from Saudi Arabia and Egypt because of the governments, the brutal governments that the U.S. was propping up. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and you know, so it didn't it didn't reflect on the entire uh, state of Islam. Yeah. Um, and. And, and, were, and the, but the, the, that's not even really the point. I'm, I'm yeah. getting really sidetracked with that. Um, yeah. Point, we can go down a big rabbit hole there. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the point is that by blaming this group of people, um, you are creating a violent, um, environment well, around them you and dehumanize them. Yeah. It, it makes that's, it easier. That's right? that's what's happening actively right now mm -hmm. is that the unvaccinated are being dehumanized like they're not even people. Yeah. I heard, uh, I think it was Kara Swisher um, saying that she thinks that if you're not vaccinated, you shouldn't be able to go in a grocery store or go um, in a restaurant or have a job. Not, not you can't enter the, um, you know, the employment area like yeah. You shouldn't be able to be employed. Yeah. I mean, essentially, if I hope if she stopped and thought about that, she would realize we're running long. Obviously, the cat's complaining at the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think that I hope that she would realize and back off a little bit because what she's advocating for is starving out. Yeah. Anybody who wasn't doesn't want to do this thing that she thinks that they ought to do. Well, and and what so I, that she can feel better about it. What I think is easily forgotten is that that <clears throat> this is a medical decision. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't something that's that's like it, it's a big decision for people. Yeah. Like it's not something that everybody the people who've had the vaccine are just like, well, you just need to do it, just do it. It's not mm -hmm. a big deal. And it's like, well, it's it's still a medical decision. Mm -hmm. And it's still not everybody's right to know what the medical decision you made, right. especially when it comes to your employer. Like that's where I think the real fight's gonna be, is because it just doesn't seem to me that the employer has the right to even ask you if you've been vaccinated, much less mandate you. Yeah, well, I think that they have the right to ask, but they can't. They don't have the right to an answer. Yeah, I well, guess and that's... I would, I would, I would actually. I, that's you're probably right about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I would agree with that. Um, sure, they can ask, but if I choose not to give you an answer, that doesn't mean you get to fire me. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing that's going to come up. Cause I, you know, some people are obviously going to just argue against, uh, discrimination, uh, on vaccine status. Yeah. And I think that that's not unreasonable to argue about just as a general, you know, that this is just another kind of discrimination. Yeah. Um, yeah. But one of the responses that I think that you'll get a lot is, well, this is a choice, though, that's being made. This yeah. isn't like discriminating for uh, against somebody based on their skin color that they had no say in. <laughs> um, this is a, a decision that they've made. Yeah. yeah, well, so is religion. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You're opposed to discrimination based on religion, right? Yeah. So that was a decision, too. Yeah. No, I I fully agree with that. Mm. Um, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's a good point. Yeah. Um, I thank you. <laughs> I came up with it all myself. Uh, well, it's, 
I tell you, this this is going to get worse before it gets better. And yeah. I, I, I do hope that it will eventually get better, though. But I think mm-hmm. the coming months are going to be crucial yeah. to see what happens. And and just to put a, a bug in your ear, people, about like who's responsible. I don't know who's responsible for it. I think that viruses do what viruses do, and yeah. there's nobody that's actually responsible. Like The idea of holding somebody liable for somebody else getting sick is just so oh, beyond yeah. my understanding that I... I, I can barely comment on it. But um, I will say this in terms of, uh, of virus mutations and so forth um, and uh, herd immunity. Uh, I think that the vaccine may have put us in a position where we can never achieve herd immunity Yeah, because the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting the virus. As I said in the beginning, and we had a, a video taken off of YouTube, by the way, yeah. uh, partly because of us saying that the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting the virus. Now that's just common knowledge, yeah, right? It's just out there um, now. Yeah. But they didn't put our video back up, by the way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, and they might take this one down for me saying it again, even yeah. though, but... Regardless. Um, <laughs> if that's the case, then so be it. <laughs> yeah, so be it. Uh, you can find us on other platforms. Yep. Um, but the the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting the virus, and now it doesn't prevent you from spreading the virus either. Yeah. Um, and so what you have created is uh, the best kind of host for a virus. Yeah. The best kind of host, um, especially if you don't really get sick, but you can still transmit the virus because all the virus wants to do is to jump to as many hosts as it can. Now, people that are unvaccinated, if they they're at least to this point, to my knowledge, there is really no evidence that unvaccinated asymptomatic people can spread the virus. Yeah. Even if they have it. Yeah. Right. Um, they did something like 10 million contact traces in China and found zero cases of asymptomatic spread, 10 million contact traces, zero. And if you're like, well, that's just, that's just contacts. Well, if that's a hundred contacts per person, that's still a hundred thousand people, yeah, right? A hundred thousand people with a hundred contacts, no cases of asymptomatic spread. Yeah. All right. This is just not a thing. So, yeah. I mean, if it happens, it is incredibly rare. Yeah. That's not true of vaccinated people, apparently. Yeah. That's what the studies are showing. So if if an unvaccinated person gets sick, if they're asymptomatic, they're very, very unlikely to spread the virus. Um, and if they're in a position where they might spread the virus, they know they're sick. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now, a vaccinated person may have the virus and feel perfectly fine, and be spreading it around to everybody they know. Yeah. Super spreaders. I mean, I, I don't want to make the claim. I'm just saying that this yeah. is a possibility. And the more hosts the the virus affects, and especially for the longer time that it can be within a host, yeah. the more likely it is to mutate. Yeah. Well. And, and the way herd immunity works is that enough people have, like, an actual immunity. Yeah. Not, I mean, vaccines... The definition is that it creates a state of immunity where you aren't can't be infected. So these aren't vaccines. I will say that again. That was yeah. another reason that our video got taken off of YouTube before, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Um, but if you can be infected, then it's not a vaccine by definition. By definition. Yeah. And um, if <laughs> if herd immunity requires enough of the population to be immune, which means they can't be infected then by vaccinating half of your population or whatever, you've created, you know, half of your population that may never be able to be immune. immune. Yeah. Yeah. At least until the vaccine wears off and they need to get their booster. Now, a lot of this is just speculation. I want to be very clear about that. Yeah. But, you know, it's speculation based on... Off the data. Yeah. Off of data, off yeah. of real scientific principles, off of what I know of virology, which is not insignificant. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not a virologist, but, yeah. you know, I I used to do forensics. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I do have some <laughs> some yeah. knowledge of these things, and I read extensively. Yeah. Um, but this is just something to think about, is that now it's the people... It, it may not... Yeah. It may not be the unvaccinated that are the problem. Yeah. with these surges at this point. Yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah. Well, there you go. You got anything more? No, I think I think that about wraps it up, man. It's good yeah. to do this again. Yeah. Um, so you'll be back next week, right? 
Yes. Okay. I am actually going to, you know, I should just promise. Um, I will get a podcast out this weekend. Okay. I'm going to say that now because now that I've said it and it's out there. <laughs> you have to do I it. I have to do it. <laughs> it's like, so. it's, I'm giving myself a deadline. Yes. Um, so I will get a podcast out this weekend. We'll try and, and give you a little. I will also bonus stay on you because truth be told, like you kept saying you were going to put one up. I didn't really give you a lot of pushback. No, I, I didn't know. really give you a hard time, I and I probably I, should have. I, I should have done it a week and a half ago, man. I had a great podcast in my head a week and a half ago. Since then, I've been thinking about other things. So it's, yeah, well, know. that's what happens when we go too long without recording. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I was worried about with this podcast is that mm-hmm. we both had so much to say that we weren't going to get it get it all in yeah. or well and we didn't spend a lot of time with the news um but I, I thought that this was important to talk about and i thought i i, I hope that it was interesting to people yeah. and maybe we still didn't lay out really what the libertarian position is but i hope that we clarified some stuff there at least where we stand mm-hmm. i mean i think that's kind of was more the idea maybe yeah. not even so much libertarian position in general but where yeah. we as individuals stand yeah. I'm not going to claim that I don't have a bias. I absolutely have a bias. This yeah. this podcast was created with the idea of disseminating that bias. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Convincing like, others. <laughs> yes. It's not that I don't have a position. I just don't think that it aligns with a Republican or Democrat. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And I don't think that, and it may align more with the traditional right than the traditional left, although I don't know that I agree with that either because, I mean, yeah. the definitions of these things are changing constantly. I yeah. think by current definitions, probably my opinion opinions fall more into the right. Yeah. But I think historically speaking, my opinions fall more in with the left. And yeah. I don't think that my opinions fall in particularly with Republicans or Democrats. I don't think left and right is the important. No, because if you start picking issue by issue, mm-hmm. you find really quick that you've got a handful from each side. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you just like took each position, like took their positions and started looking at them, mm-hmm. you'd find really quick that, yeah, I don't fit in either of these boxes. And yeah. it's very clear. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I don't think that right and left is actually a very valuable, we talked about this before on the podcast too. Um, I, I don't think that right and left is that valuable a, a way of dividing politics at this point. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that the mo- more important point is, is liberty versus authority. Yeah. And I think both the Republicans and the Democrats fall on one side of that. Yeah. Oh, uh, without question they do. And where they fall on the wrong side of that? Yeah. Um I I disagree with them. I don't care whether they're Republican or Democrat. Exactly. So. Um and where they their ideas align with mine when they're on the liberty side, I'll yeah. support them whether they're Republican or Democrat. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. I I hope I do that consistently. I think I do. <laughs> right. Um, so anyway, uh, if YouTube blocks us, <laughs> <laughs> we can be found on Facebook and our website. <laughs> yes. And, and, and iTunes and Podbean, yeah, yeah. um, where you can like, and subscribe and leave comments and, or reviews. Um, you can always send me an email at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, you can send Liberty Larry an email at Larry at the Liberty Mike, but he won't get it. Well, you say <laughs> that, but I was going to show you something after we record. I think I'm maybe getting those. Like I got a random email, and I think it was forwarded from my Liberty Mike email to my regular email. Oh, well, that would be cool. So I don't know. We'll have to look at it after the show and see. All right. <laughs> well, um, either way, whether uh, whether he's getting his emails or not, yeah. <laughs> um, we will be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.